Smart objects are one of the most powerful features of Photoshop, allowing you to update your raw image at any time, non-destructively apply filters, and much more. However, there are three main kinds of smart objects and they all look exactly the same, so it's really hard to benefit from them if you don't know which is which. In this video, you'll learn the differences between them and see how Lumenzio version 9.1's basics panel can help you clearly understand which kind of smart object you're actually using. I've opened up the same image multiple different ways in Photoshop and stacked them together as layers. So what I have here on the bottom is just a normal pixel layer. It's just a rasterized copy of the image. It's not a smart object. There's no smart object icon. And then above it, I have four different smart objects. And you know they're smart objects because they have this little icon in the bottom right. But they all look identical. You might think that these four are all the same kind of smart object, but they're not. There's actually three different kinds of smart objects in here. You could tell which is which by experimenting, or if you have Lumenzia Basics version 9.1, the raw button is going to help give you a clue as to what's going on. So if I click on this first smart object, it's telling me that the actively selective layer is a smart object, but it's not a raw smart object. It's red because it's not raw. The next one is showing up in yellow, as is the one after that, and on top is green. So these are something different. These are actually raw smart objects. We'll come back to them in a moment, but let's take a look first at this bottom one. It's not raw. When we double click it, it's going to open up as a separate document showing all the layers. I could have had 30 different layers in here. I just happen to have one copy of the image that got wrapped up into a smart object. And I'm going to close this and just kind of comment that with this regular smart object, it's a very useful kind of smart object when you want to say, apply filters non-destructively or warp the image non-destructively, any number of things you can't necessarily do with one layer or things you might want to do to multiple layers. It has nothing to do with the raw, but it is very useful. So the red raw indicator is letting you know it's not raw. This next one showing in yellow, what this means is that it is dependent. Some other layer here is the exact same content. And I know it's going to be this one above because it's the only other one that's showing up with this yellow raw indicator. So if I double click this, it's raw and it's going to open up the Adobe Camera Raw interface with all the slider values that I was using in Lightroom. And I can make some changes here. Let's say I want to brighten up these rocks and then we use a layer mask to just selectively reveal them. So I'm going to go increase the exposure, click OK. And then when I do that, it's going to update the layer that I've been editing. But because the one above it is a dependent copy of it, it's also going to update. You see how both thumbnails are now brighter. And generally speaking, that's not what you want for photography. There are some exceptions. And for example, if you were going to apply noise reduction to the sky and you need a certain filter mask to do that, and you want sharpening in the foreground, you need a different filter mask for that then you might want to take the same raw image with the same raw processing and apply two different filters to two different parts of the image. But generally speaking, this is not what you want. And most of the time in photography, a yellow raw indicator probably means that you didn't create the independent copy you wanted. Now on top, it's in green because it is independent. And if we open this one up, we'll also get the raw interface. It's another raw smart object. But this time, I'm just going to make some crazy yellow color cast. Click OK it will update only this one copy because it's unique. It is an independent smart object. And this is what we want. This is what allows us to take the image and process it different ways for the purpose of blending. So the red is very useful when you're working with already processed layers, and the green is very useful when you want to multi-process the same raw in different ways. But the yellow is usually not what you want. Let's take a closer look at how we create them correctly and how we might approach this in a more real way. So I'm going to go step back to the starting point and let's work with this top layer. So we'll just take these bottom ones and delete them. We now have one version of our image. I'm going to duplicate it, brighten these rocks, and then just blend it back in. So the question is, how can I duplicate it? If I go up to layer, new layer of your copy, which is the command or control J keyboard shortcut that you would normally use to duplicate a layer. When I use this, I get a copy. It is a raw smart object, but it is dependent. It's yellow. And the original underneath it is also yellow because now it has a twin. That's not what we want. We need to create this in a different way. So let's go ahead and delete this. And it's showing green again because it no longer has another copy within this document. 
In Photoshop, you can right click and you can choose new smart object via copy, and this would give us an independent copy. Or in Lumenzia, you can hold down the shift key and click on pre-blend or hold down shift and click on smart object, or just click on the smart object key. And when you do, you see this option to duplicate raw smart object, and it will give you the green version that you want. So see, they're both showing it green. So now we have a separate copy of it that is totally independent and we can change the raw slider values in a unique way. Let's double click on this and I'll go ahead and make the same adjustment to increase the exposure to lighten up these rocks, maybe something like that. Click OK. And this time it's only gonna update the brightness on the one on top because it's independent. And now we just need to blend it into the correct part of the image over here. So I'm gonna add a black layer mask by alt clicking on mask. I need a selection of this area to paint through and I think a dark selection should help do that. So that's looking pretty close, but maybe bring the slider down a bit, get a little bit more precise in this area or maybe even select the foreground. So if I hit W for the quick select, I can try and grab this area so that I'm not picking up into the clouds and all that kind of stuff. Just really kind of working with these rocks and maybe add a little bit more down below here because I, I'm just trying to avoid the sky is really all I want to do. So now when I load this as a selection, it's gonna take this area's luminosity down below. So I'll go click on cell to load as a selection. And then I'd like to make it a subtracted selection. If I just double click the minus button, it will automatically subtract out blacks from it so that I'm gonna get targeting of the brighter areas of these rocks and I'm not gonna lighten the deepest, darkest cracks that I want to stay dark. Hitting B for my paintbrush, switching to white in the foreground, using high opacity and low flow. I now can just go brush over these areas of rock to reveal that lighter detail that I wanted there. Something like that from before to after, and maybe a little bit more up above, make a few little tweaks, but that's generally the idea. And that's how you can work with these smart objects using this new raw indicator. Now click into one of these next videos to learn more about Lumenzia or common misperceptions about smart objects.